Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are standing. Shahata the Lehida the Hapala Hada Hata Hasadaba. Ibra Neko and the Lahaskada the Hada Bayan Ha. Every day get the Bayan the Belegadan don't shut a column the Hada Dish. Lam Breget the Hansons the Hada Bayan Ha. Ibam the Babala Hansos of the Zekate. Lam Brigit to Hamdo Balanda Gabreno Sakate. Elem Breget Begalendo Sata Kayanda. Iba Baba Baba Baye de Rege Sonda Leda Vieta Abela Lan Sotoko Eto Baba Benan Sata Katia Ila Rute de 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 Dodiato, Iba Babaran so de Gayada Barada Don Shagi, Lampre Babaleza, and Lampa Baba Babayada Grando Sada Yadadi, Lampre Manando Sata Yeda Radadi, Lampro de Don Shate and Dayada.
and I know your heart. This is my prayer this morning. I want to know your way. Yeah. I want to know your heart. I want to know Preamble to the prayer conference starting on Friday, the life of prayers. I've got the way, I've got the way, life of God live inside of me. I've got the way, I've got the way, the life of the Lord, the life of God. So So we 
instrument this life that I have is the life of God only the keyboard please this life that I have is the life of God this life that I live is the life of God in me this life that I live is the life so joys on me this morning I will be singing and chanting for the rest of eternity my daddy my daddy, my daddy, my daddy. Your, your baby is singing, singing. I will be singing and shouting and chanting for the rest of eternity oh my daddy my daddy, daddy, my daddy. your baby I will be singing, 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 sit down, let's do the word, let's do the word, choir is tempting me, choir is tempting me, the life of prayer, Revelation chapter 5, please can we stand up for the reading of the word as an honor to God, then we'll sit down and continue, Revelation chapter 5 verse 8, and Revelation chapter 8, 3 to 4, um, media please let's have that scripture Revelation 5 and verse 8 um, then Revelation chapter 8 verse 3 to 4 please these are custom and spot we we'll stand to the reading of the word and when he had taken the book the four beasts and four and twenty elders fall down before the lamb having every one of them harps and gold in theirs full of others which are what the prayers of the saints Revelation chapter 8 from verse 3 from verse 3 the Bible says and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne the prayer of all saints may the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus name please sit down enjoy God's presence get your writing materials the life of prayer the life of prayer any individual without a solid life of a pr of prayer any individual without a solid life of prayer is just existing but not living any pastor without a prayer life will become a parrot any church without a solid prayer altar will become a warehouse where they just gather and house people so the life of prayer is a life we have been committed into life is spiritual and so man must learn how to take charge in the spiritual realm everything that controls the physical everything you see that happens in the physical realm is controlled by what the spiritual or the invisible realm so man must learn how to operate in that realm to have full dominance full authority on the earth are we together now what does it mean to be a spiritual man a spiritual man simply means two things when you divide that word into two you can get two words from it it simply means spirit plus ritual so it simply means a spiritual man is one who is under the rulership the control and the lordship of the holy spirit in addition to engaging the rituals of our faith what are the rituals of our faith giving worship service and prayers that's what makes you a spiritual man that's why many Christians are not spiritual. They think it's just about coming to church alone. They don't know it is expedient on them. It is a responsibility on every child of God to have a solid life of prayer. Do we understand that? Are we getting blessed? So everything about life is sponsored from the womb of prayer. If you learn to be a man of prayer, see, listen, in the current agenda of God in these last days, if you are not one given to prayer, you won't be functional. In the current agenda of God in this last day, if you are not one given to prayer, you will not be relevant. 
And let me tell you very quickly before we proceed. Prayer isn't easy. It's a sacrifice. But on, on the playing ground, that's what Christianity is all about. A have you seen the possibility of producing fire without a sacrifice? No. Anywhere you will see fire, there must be what? A sacrifice. That's why Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 tells us to present our body a living sacrifice. And I told us that's why the things of the spirit, sometimes it looks so burdensome to us right it looks so painful look at what the bible says jesus said come unto me all ye that labor and i will give you what rest what did he say he will give you rest but here the rest he said come my yoke is easy and he calls it yoke he said my body is light but he calls it body did you understand that my yoke is easy he calls it yoke do you know they call a yoke what they put in the in the neck of an animal to plow and he says my body is light and he calls it a body so he knows one time I was talking to somebody. I said, why are you not serious with your prayer life? He said, Papa, it's noisy. I said, who told you? Have you not read, read, read the song? Nobody told me the road won't be easy. I'm telling you right now that the road won't be easy. So you can't sing that song again. It has expired. Are we together? It's not easy. If I did be we were dead sacrifice, it would have been easy. Because we won't feel the pain. But the problem is that we are living sacrifice. We are still alive while the fire is burning off. The Bible says he that will follow him will carry his cross. What does the cross signify? Death. Is there a convenient way to die? So why were you expecting it to be cheap and easy? The life of a prayer of prayer is a commitment. Are we together? Why do we pray? Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the nation now I've written so many books of prayer on prayer, and that's what I'm teaching to us, teaching on, on this this way. I've written Sentence to Life of Prayer. I have about 20 books, Sentence to Life of Prayer, part one and part two. It's on Amazon, you can check there. Alright. But what I'm teaching right now is not in any of my books. Because I need to awaken. I just found out that why prayer becomes so difficult for people is that they expected it to be easy. There is no time, no matter how you used to pray, I have prayed 10 days stretch my children are here but no matter how used to it i get it doesn't look easy it's a commitment you must understand that christianity is built from the basis of sacrifice he tried it with the prophets there was no salvation he tried it with the kings there was no salvation he tried it with the judges there was no salvation he said i must make a sacrifice then he cut off the head of his only son and he got the entire world. The foundation of Christianity is on what? Sacrifice. If you capture this, the things of the Spirit will not be burdensome to you. Look at what the Bible says in chapter 22. The Bible says, and Isaac asked the father, here is the wood. And we got what? The fire. There is the altar. But where is the sacrifice? So every prayer that is not done from the basis of a sacrifice holds no weight and strikes no chord in eternity. If it, if it doesn't touch you, it can't touch God. Understand this, not the uh, let's pray. So, Father, I will thank you. Uh, no, if it doesn't touch you, it won't touch God. Understand it. Quiet, please sit and thank you. It must be born from the basis of what? Sacrifice. You think we like to do the things we do? No, but necessity is laid on us. I think is it first Corinthians 6 19 there about uh, Paul said, necessity is laid on me if I don't preach the gospel. It's not that I wish not to, I don't have. An option that is how you must see the life of prayer do you understand that else i will pray i will pray i will pray oh i will pray if i don't pray satan will make mess of me i will pray i will pray i will pray oh i will pray if i don't pray satan will make mess of me I do I care, oh man, I do I care, oh man, I do I care, oh man, I try to walk I do 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 the day I realized this, it changed and revolutionized my prayer life. 
Isaiah chapter 64, I think, and verse 7. He said, No one has stirred up himself to take a hold of God. Who told you there is something that will call for us the spirit of prayer? No, you start it, then it meets you at a point. Out of that tiredness and sleepy state, you thought, La da da, Iba baba da, Iba ah, ah. Then suddenly, you find that it is no longer you praying again. The Holy Ghost is helping now your infirmity with groanings that words cannot utter. You will stir up yourself. Give me that scripture as 64 7. No man has stirred up himself to take a hold of God. There are realms where men. Did you see what the Bible says? And there is not one that calleth upon what? Thy name. That's what? Stare it. Did he say, and God stared the man? The man makes a decision. And the Holy Ghost takes over such a man. That's how we got here. Are we following? That's how we got there. My strength and survivor is the place of prayer. That's one thing I know what to, how to do. If not, the devil will have made a mess of me. When he threw all the fairy depths of hell upon me, I went back to that place. Are we together? When you get into situations where you don't understand, the assignment for you is to pray in a way you don't understand. Pray in a way. If your pain can't kill your prayers, your prayers will soon kill your pain. I'm a living testimony of this word of God. We've not followed after cunningly devised fable. Of this word of God, our hands have handled. Our ears have had. We have seen with our eyes even the word of life. We have tested it for ourselves that these words are true. That's why I like to call it Asian words. Every changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the world in In these last days, if you don't get strong in the place of prayer, the devil will make a mess of your life. He will make a mess of your family. That's what the Bible tells us in John. He said that Jesus came to the temple one time, a temple where he expected to see everywhere on fire. He saw men buying and selling. The Bible says he picked Cain and decided to chase them out of the place and said, but my father's house shall be called, shall be called a house of prophets. Verse 20. He said, But know you not that your body is the temple of God. And so you are that house, and what you do be called a bahade. Ah, kata. Ah, a babanda. A bah. Ah. It gets to a point where even when you sneeze, you sneeze fire. I told my wife, I said, If you only pray when you are in trouble, you are already in one. The president of America, even in sleep, is he a president? You don't touch him. So who said that when you are awake, that's when the devil leaves you. When you sleep, then they begin to push you at night. Even in your sleep, your authority is still exerted. Why? The life of prayer. Number one, why? The life of prayer is maintaining touch with the Father on Zion. Maintaining touch with the Father. John 15 and verse 5. He said, abide in me, for with me you can do what? Nothing. Prayer is the spiritual placenta via which man maintains connection to its source. Once a child cuts off from the placenta, then that child is telling the mother, I can now survive on my own. Prayer is that spiritual placenta that connects humanity to divinity. The more you stay in the place of prayer, the more you begin to look like him. The more you begin to smell like him. The Bible says, and they took notice of them, that they had been with Christ. You will smell like where you have been. You will smell like where you have been. To maintain touch. Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. The Bible says, the custom of Jesus, what? Before the dawning of the day, he goes to a solitude place. And there he prays not because there was a need not because there was a problem not because the devil was after him but it was what a lifestyle of maintaining connection to your source so that that life began to flow you remember where we read John 15 5 he said without me you can do some things you can do what nothing that's why I tell people there is nothing you cannot pray about are we together number two
the lion of the tribe of Judah listen me he's walking inside the lion of the tribe of Judah listen me he's walking inside number two sustaining the spiritual man and spiritual fire Number two, sustaining. Why the life of prayer? Sustaining the spiritual man and spiritual fire. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. The Bible says one time the apostles were threatened and they got so weak in faith. And the Bible said they got themselves to pray. And great grace came upon them. The fear disappeared. Why you are scared? Why you are shy? Why you are easily intimidated? Because you are not a man or a woman of prayer. There is a kind of spiritual boldness that is sponsored from spiritual fire. I tell people when a man engage and understand or walk the path of prayers, he will still replace his blood vessels with spiritual fire. Very soon he will walk the path of Enoch, where he will not be qualified to be among mortals. Do we understand that? You maintain what? Spiritual fire. Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 8 and 13. The Bible says, and the fire on the altar must not go out. The fire on the altar must not go out. Let Luke chapter 21 and verse 37. The Bible says, And day after day, Jesus goes to the temple preaching, and at night he goes to the Mount of Olives. There he prayed. That was his lifestyle of how to maintain spiritual fire. So, anytime the battle of life comes, you are battle ready. Do we understand that? You are red hot to attend to any situation of life. Listen, how you charge your spirit. It's synonymous to how you charge your phone. When your battery is low battery, is your phone not affected? Some apps begin to misbehave. That's why you are behaving the way you are. You are on low battery spiritually. Tell your neighbor, charge your battery. Charge your battery. Stand up one minute, can we charge ourselves? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Let the Sit down, sit down one minute. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. If you are low battery, you can't do much. If you are low spiritual fire, you can't do much. Are we following? You can't do much. How would you say because you went to sleep in somebody's house, what is attacking the person is now attacking you? How? However, you go to a big man house, you have not become wealthy. It's bad, bad thing you used to attract, you used to contact. You are very contagious to evil. Low spiritual what? Fire! Tell your neighbor, wake up, wake up, wake up. Number three, regulating the soul, spirit, and body. Prayer used to stand strong against temptation, bitterness, anger, unrighteousness, and the works of the flesh. Prayer. Luke chapter 22 and verse 40 and 46. Jesus said, pray that you fall not into what? Temptation. Luke 22, 40 and 46. Pray that you fall not into what? Temptation. So if you don't pray, what will you fall inside? Simple. The Bible is not difficult to understand. Stop forcing yourself. Why is looking difficult for you is that you are trying to become a con man. When you take a text out of the context, what is left? Con. You become a con man. That's why it's looking difficult. Are we together? <laughs> pray that ye enter not into what temptation so prayer is a spiritual covering and protection against what temptation that's why you're wondering the kind of any little thing now you get angry you are bitter you say I swear till I die I will not forgive the person and you are in church how do you want to make heaven pray pray so how you regulate your spiritual soul and body is through the life of prayer number four why the life of prayer the life of prayer helps you to see in the spirit the life of prayer helps you to see in the spirit Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2 he said I will stand upon my toe and watch what you will have to say I will stand upon my toe and watch what you have to say Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 he said call upon me and I will answer you and begin to show you things you don't know. Say there are certain dimensions of revelation you will not get by studying the scriptures. You only get them in the place of prayer. You begin to travel into realms and planes in the spirit. Call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things you do not know. Are we getting blessed already? 
Acts chapter 11 and verse 5. Paul, Peter said, and I was in Joppa. And as I prayed, I fell into a trance. Acts 11 and verse 5. I was in Joppa. As I prayed, I what? Fell into a trance. Acts 22 verse 17. He said, while I was in the temple, as I prayed, I fell into what? A trance. Give me Acts 22 17. And it came to pass when I came again to Jerusalem. Even while I prayed in the day, what happened? My eyes were open. If you were prayerful enough, the devil won't touch your family anyhow. You will see things before it happens. A man of prayer is ahead of his years. He walks into years before he enters them in the fiscal. Did you see that? While I prayed, I fell into it. You get so serious. Da, 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 da. Suddenly, you begin to travel through your thought realm into the realm of God and begin to see things ahead of you are we getting blessed already are we sure we are number five contending against opposing forces pray advance and destroy the destructive activities of the devil contending against opposing forces. Acts chapter 4 and verse 24 to 29. The Bible says and they were threatened never to speak in the name of God as the apostles and they went to the place of prayer. The Bible says and they lifted up their voice in one accord and said, oh God, behold their threatens. That's how you face darkness in the place of prayer. You do warfare in the atmosphere. Are we together? Are we following? Acts chapter 12 and verse 5. Acts chapter 12 and verse 5, Acts chapter 16 and verse 16. Psalm 56 and verse 9. He said, when I cry unto you, O God, then my enemies shall turn back. Give me Psalm 56 and verse 9. When I cry out to you, then my enemies shall what? Turn back. Whenever you see the gates of hell released against your life, against your family, you see things happening in your academies, your finances, you don't understand. What do you do? Engage the place of prayer. Satan, take your hands off. Get out of my finances. Get out of my family. Shut up. Do we understand that? That's how it's done. He said, when I cry unto you, then shall my enemies what? Turn back. So when I keep quiet, what will happen? They come forward. <laughs> when I cry out to you, then shall my enemies turn back. Anytime a kind of challenge comes to my life, you just hear me tell my wife, I know what to do. I know what to do. So I just declare prayer for myself. I don't have this. I only say till I see a change. When I cry unto you, then shall my enemies turn back. Once they see I begin to engage a power that is beyond the natural, they will turn back. So over that family situation, have you really prayed? Have you prayed? I was to talk about essentials to a laugh of prayer. So you know why your prayer sometimes is not making any sense. Have you prayed over that family situation? Have you prayed? Have you changed that situation you are not comfortable about? Do you understand that? Tell your neighbor, take responsibility from today. Start becoming responsible for yourself and for your family. Please give up. Number six, scriptural prescription for pain. Thank you. Better scriptural prescription for pain James chapter 5 and verse 13 he said is any among you in pain afflicted let him what pay that is the drug the scripture gives you when you are in pain is any afflicted in a uncomfortable situation what should he do pay they didn't say be running from one place to another sharing your, your pain to everybody around and they say yeah sorry yeah sorry yeah sorry the best any man can offer you is pity. Only God can change your situation. Is there any afflicted? Let him what? Pray. At 22 and verse 44. The Bible says, and he was in great agony and he prayed. Luke 22, 44. He was in great agony and he what? Prayed. The pain pushed him to prayer, not away from prayer. How do the church react? When we are in pain, what do we do? We get out from God. Is that not what we do? We get angry. We, God, where are you? But he's telling you that this is how I say you should respond. When you are in pain, come and cry to me. While in great, what? Agony. What did he do? He prayed the more. The more the pain. When life gets rough on you, get tough in prayers. The more the pain, the intensity the prayers. Are we getting blessed already? 
I didn't come to entice you or encourage you this morning or make you get excited. I came to challenge your spirit and tell you to wake up and become a responsible child of God. What makes up for sonship is rights and responsibility. That's what happened to the two young men that asked their father for, their, for his wealth. Is it Luke 15 or 17 there about? Say, Father, divide what belongs to me. The Bible said, and the younger one said that. And the father gave it to them both. Read your Bible. He divided for the two of them. And the young one went and spent everything. Now, it wasn't wrong for him to have asked for his inheritance, is his right. The major problem was that he collected the inheritance and disconnected from the source. That's what some of us do. When we get resources from God, we no longer see him. He said, No, you know, the way I'm so blessed. Now, my business is taking my time. That's the problem, not because he was wrong for him to ask for that. Because the father gave the two of them. So the young one res- understands what? Rights. The other brother understands what? Responsibility. Because he came and was begging for a kid good. And the father is saying, but everything here belongs to you. So when you communicate rights and responsibilities, what do you have? Sonship. Galatians chapter 4. He says, as long as an heir is a child. What does a child know? Right. He's not better from what? A servant. What does a servant know? Responsibility. He is put under governors to make him a son. So sonship is that you have certain rights. However, you have certain responsibilities. Why can I challenge God like Ezekiel? What did he say? Oh God, see my service for your kingdom. When my father was going after strange God, I was there for you. In the grave, no one prays you there. He had responsibilities. And God turned back to his Go back and tell him, I give him 15 more years. You can't claim rights without responsibilities. What did I say again? Romans chapter 12 and verse 12. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Number seven. Building spiritual capacity. Building spiritual capacity. First Corinthians 14 and verse 4. Say, I will pray in my spirit. For if I pray in the spirit, my mind is unfruitful. I'll be it. My spirit prayed. Did you see that? He said, He that speaking in an unknown tongue edified what? Himself. I pray. Jude 1 20. He said, but building up yourself in your most holy faith by praying what? In the Holy Ghost. Build up yourself. You build spiritual capacity to contain realities and releases from God. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. Listen, there is a kind of spiritual energy that powers faith. No matter the quality of your phone, if your battery is not charged, it's useless. That's why some of you, with all the revelation you know, with all the insight of scripture you know, you can't do so much in God. Why? There is a level of energy that powers faith. That's why I say build it up to your most holy faith. What's your most holy faith? Your point of zero doubt. Where you live as if you are not a mortal. Where you live as if there is no impossibility in your realm. Nothing scares you. Is not powered just by revelation alone. It is sponsored by what? Spiritual energy. Have you the Bible telling Jesus, telling people in scripture, say so great your faith. There are people with weak faith, there are those with strong faith, there are those with great faith. We don't believe the same thing. When we put a situation on the scene, now my level of belief is different from yours. What is sponsoring is not just my revelation. We can have the same revelation, but the spiritual energy that powers it. Have you not seen when you see a car? What do you see? Mercedes Benz. That means it is powered by what? Mercedes. It means the engine that makes such car to function. It's not the beauty of the body or whatever you are seeing. That's what prayer does to faith. The internal engine that powers it. That you look at situation and speak over it with confidence. It's prayers. Are we getting understanding this morning? Are we blessed already? Number eight. Or number eight. Yeah, number eight. Releasing possibilities. Releasing possibilities. James chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. He said, The effectual prayer of the righteous man make it tremendous power what? available. You release possibilities when you are a man given to prayer. Around your world will be possibilities. You'll be full of testimonies because you will dare the undareable. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. He said, I pray that kingdom come. So he didn't say that we release the kingdom through preaching. He said we should pray it come. So the kingdom is released through what? Praying. And what's the kingdom? Realms of what? Possibilities. Do you understand that? Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. The Paul, Bible says, And Paul and Pilas, Silas prayed. They sang. And the prison door was shaken. 
there was earthquake in the prison supernatural encounters began to happen there those were opening at their own accord no one they needed not to have the keys that's why the jailer of the bible said wanted to kill himself when he woke up and saw what has happened because he's looking at the keys and the doors are open so prayers can release some kind of possibilities where you get a job without an application letter it's a realm prayer the realm of prayer is the realm of what possibilities you don't know so much you are missing i've been there and i'm there you don't know so much you are missing if only you can pray are we together why we're in the campus early days we're people of prayer it's not now everybody's just busy we had prayer click prayer group prayer partner every type of prayer team and we're building our lives are we together <laughs> Are we getting blessed already? Are we together? Number nine. The Bible says Jesus finished praying and he came and walked on water. So you will pray and enter into possibilities. What we stop men can stop you because you are carrying the atmosphere of what? Possibility. That's why I fear a man of prayer. I fear them. You can't bring a man of prayer down. It's difficult to defeat them. Any man that knows how to put his knees on the ground, you can't make him fall in life. Do we understand that? Number nine, life transformation. Prayer changes you, not just preaching. But prayer. That's why every sermon must be fertilized and fireized, fertilized in prayers. Every true singing must be fertilized, fertilized in prayers. Prayers changes you. The Bible says, and why they were in the Mount of Transfiguration. Now, listen, the name of that mountain is not Mount of Transfiguration. It was because of the encounter that happened there that gave it a name. Do you understand that? The Bible says, give me, give me that scripture, Mark 9. See, Mark 9, Luke 9. Luke 9. Luke 9, 29. The Bible says, and at Luke 9, Luke 9, 29. The Bible says, and why they prayed, their faces were changed. Their faces were what? Changed. You'll be transformed. You'll be turning. Have you not seen sometimes when you just finish or maybe a, a season of fasting and prayer? When you come up, people are saying, You are looking very fine. You are looking very beautiful. My daughter said to me, He said, Papa, so a few days ago, say, Papa, when she was trying to um, help me come, coming down to me, I said, Papa, you are looking fresh. And I laughed. I said, It is fasting. Yes. I'm on 120. It is fasting. Once I enter into it, then my face is lightened like that of Moses. Not because I was chopping food. Jewish food. <laughs> it's not any time I enter into that realm, then I contact my true reality. Suddenly everybody says, there's something looking at you. You are looking like this. You are looking like this. It is not cream. I've not rubbed cream for two weeks. Some of you have used Mary Kay, Z, Q. There's nothing you have not put. Foundation, pillars, columns, nothing that is cement, everything. Something you would have sown. Let's use it and complete building work. That's all you are saying on your face. What was the Mary Kay in the days of that at the age of 90 something a king, not a mere man, not a pauper, is still admiring Sarah? Is that mystery I'm showing to you that if a lady can stay in the place of prayer, she will be transfigured, she will become another person to our generation. People will see you from that kind of atmosphere. There's a kind of atmosphere a man of prayer carries. That's why have you not found out people that are very prayerful. Once you come around them, you are compared to want to give them something. It's, it's my life. I, I live there so I can tell you what I enjoy from that realm. They are compelled. You carry a compelling presence. Even when you speak, men are under. It's like you grip their hearts like this. They are compelled. Are we getting blessed this morning? Are we challenged by this word? So prayer brings real transformation. It changes you. There is no desire or change you want that you can't get through the place of prayer. But then, prayer is a calling. Prayer is what? A calling. We have been sentenced to a life of prayer. Luke 18 and verse 1. Men ought always to pray. If you are a man, you must pray. That's when, when Jesus became a man. What did he do? He prayed. Yes, why should a God be praying? But as long as he came to this human form, as a man, he must pray. Because men ought always to pray. Like my son, we say, in your family, even if it's your sister that is praying, she's the man. You are the man. Men ought always to pray. It's a calling. 
is a calling. The way we say you must give your life to pray to, to God. That's how we are telling that you must maintain a life of prayer. It's not a suggestion. This is how the early believers were. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in prayers. Daily. It was a life. This is how they built some of us. We grow to know it. Prayer. We grew with it. Not this technology generation. We grew with prayers. That's why I told some of you, I say you are lucky. In the early days when we were panting for God, there was no, no MP3 messages. So. That's why our revelation are direct. Not when we hear you talk. So, I know you are the double. This is your light. I know. <laughs> because of the generation of MP3. <laughs> we didn't grow there in that generation. We had nothing much to distract us. So we could pray. That's how we became the men you see today. And God is still taking us further. I declare, I declare in no time, before the end, here we end. Your name, my name, the name of this ministry will be known across the nations of the world. I prophesy if you are sure of what I'm saying before the end of this year. Your name, the name of this ministry and my name will be known across the nations of the world. In the name of Jesus. Prayer is what a calling. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 17. He said, I pray without what? Season. He didn't say S-E-A-S-O-N. No, it's not whether rainy season or heat season. It is pray without stopping. And I told you, how do you engage this? One time I told God, because prayer is my word, it's my life. And I said, oh Lord, anyway, worship is more than that. But I said, oh Lord, I want to understand how do you pray without season. So he told me, he said, son, when your thoughts is prayers. Right? Let me explain to you, Ephesians 3.20. God can do far above what you want ask or what think so the realm of god is even controlled my by your thoughts that's why every man got struck in scripture for pride never said anything and they said in your heart i will they never said it but god heard it so the realm of god is controlled by what thoughts that's why the easiest when you want to enter the entering the spiritual realm is no hard do it's a thought away when i say i want to enter into, if i want to prophesy right now in this service all i just need to say stand up everybody i want to prophesy and i've entered uh, some other time the way you looked at me I had to skip it Ephesians 6 and verse 18 it says pray all manner of prayer 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 26 25 pray for us number 11 why do we live a life of prayer we give earthly permission for heavenly interference we give earthly permission for heavenly interference Luke chapter 16 and verse 9 say whatever you bind on earth shall be bound where so it starts where? F. Why? God has no right to come on the earth except when he wants to impose his sovereign will. Why do we say that? The Bible says the heavens of heavens belong to God. But the earth he has given to what? The sons of men. So it is against the jurisdiction and the judgment of God who is a righteous judge to intervene without the interference of a man engaging him. It's like a lawyer entering into your case that you did not ask for. It's through prayers. When we engage in him, have the right to now step in. Else the devil should say it is your creature versus me but when the situations are beyond us we get into a place of prayer we join our father to join his creation and face him do you understand that so prayer is heavenly interference earthly permission for heavenly interference number 12 to be a house of god fully formed to be a house of god fully formed as christ Matthew 21 and verse 13, Mark 11, 17, and Luke 19, 46. Say, but my house shall be called a house of what? Prayer. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Colossians 4 and verse um, 12. Say, Ephraim, your brother laboring fervently in you, that you may be perfect and complete in the will of God. He labors. So when men want to say, I want to walk in the will of God, it's a life of prayer. That's why the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered when you are a prayer man a prayer woman you, you are always in the wheel you are in the wheel you don't make careless mistakes of life laboring what? fervently that you may be complete and be in the perfect will of God very quickly I have 15 points here but I'll stop anywhere I stop alright I'm just giving us the tip of the iceberg and the prayer power but we'll get that completely in the retreat in the, the prayer conference starting on Friday is that okay? I just wanted us to, to introduce the conference number one essentials for an effective prayer life 
essentials. I'll be very fast. I just have like five minutes more. I have 15 points. Let me just see what I can do. Is that okay? Essentials for an effective prayer life. Your heart posture in prayers. Number one. Your heart posture in prayers. Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 14. He said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves. So it takes what? A posture of what? Humility to pray. First John chapter 3 verse 20 to 21. He said, if our heart does not condemn us, then we have what? Access to God. First John 3 20 to 21. If our heart does not what? Condemn us. Then what? 3 20 to 21. It's like you are hearing from another realm. Come back to this realm. Come back. Aha. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. 21. Dearly believe, if our heart do not what? Reprehend us. Then we have what? Confidence before God. So your heart posture must be right. Is that okay? If you are living in bitterness, envy, unrighteousness, never trust what you hear in the place of prayer. That's how some people come up with the Holy Ghost said, you hate a sister. I said the Holy Ghost said you should, you should, you should do something evil to her. Why won't you hear the Holy Ghost when your heart posture is polluted? When your posture, heart posture is not correct in the place of prayer, first, you will get what we call a false prophetic flows. You begin to hear strange voices and think it's the Holy Ghost. Do you understand that? You can't live in bitterness, you can't live in resentment, in envy, in unforgiveness, and you trust what you hear from the place of prayer. Never do that. It's too risky. Do we understand that? Psalm 66 verse 18. He said, if you regard iniquity in your heart, God will not hear you. But 11 verse 25. He said, but when you stand to pray, forgive those who have wronged you. Your heart posture matters. That's why you hear preachers saying that forgiveness, forgiveness does more to you. Don't hinder your prayer because you have a hard thing and a stubborn heart. I say, I will not forgive him. I will not forgive her. Why? You are not qualified to make me miss heaven. You are not. Because of you, I will not eat. Hunger has not catch me. But see, if I can't sleep at me, then I'm looking for sleep. I will sleep fine. Stop giving people certain levels of relevance in your life that they don't equate to. You are making people feel too important. How will you be texting a, a guy or a girl and tell I, I have not been myself since you left me? Everything about my life has scattered. Something I even God has not been able to achieve. The devil has even been trying to scatter your life. He has not succeeded fully. But one girl or boy did it. Okoro. Ah! Scatter your life. Some of you, God needs to help you. He needs to what? Help you. Why? Is there no root in the Bible? Is there no root? The book of roots? Is this the only book of we have Esther? Uh -uh. If John said he's leaving you, there is Peter. There's Peter. Even if Peter chose to go, there is Matthew. If you can't see from Matthew, from Mark is there. Don't make anybody over relevant. Yes, celebrate people's presence in your life, but when they choose to walk, you will give you leave them. Let them go. You won't die. Nothing will happen to you. Do you know the whole world left Jesus and he still, he still made it? Only one person left you. You are not yourself. You have gone to carry sniper. You have mind. May the Lord help you. <laughs> what did I say again? May the Lord help you. <laughs> Is that okay? So please have a good heart posture. Is that okay? Once your heart posture is wrong, your prayer is already um, 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 destabilized. Is that okay? Number two. Reason for prayer. I'm teaching us on essentials for an effective prayer life. Reasons for prayer. James chapter 4 and verse 3. The Bible says, but you ask and don't receive because you ask what? And miss. How can you be praying for papa to, to mama to die so you marry papa? How do you want God to answer it? No, a young lady came to me. I heard this story from um, Dr. Mrs. Zambeke Neche. How that a young lady came to meet him as I saw in a vision and marrying a great man of God in the city of Abuja. And she said to the lady, but the young man is married and he has a wife. He said, eh, what if the wife die? No. You are, you are, you are, you <laughs> see, there are prayers you should know you are wasting your time. Once your motive is wrong, your prayer is useless. 
the reasons of prayer matters a lot. It matters a lot. Get it right. You can't be praying prayer of wickedness, prayer of evil. Because you are bitter towards somebody and you are praying that God should scatter their life. I have never and I will never do it. Nobody has hurt me that will make me go and I, I should go and sit down in the place of prayer and be praying for you because you betrayed me, because you hurt me. No, it doesn't work like that. If you touch the anointed, he doesn't need to say a word. His anointing will fight you. That's what David said. Even in the place that Saul has missed it and he had the opportunity to kiss Saul, what did he say? Even if you call him ex anointed, he said, No one touches the anointed and is innocent. That is the way of the spirit. No one, God doesn't see your innocence at all because that oil is on that container. I don't need to go and pray for you. Some of people say, and my life is scattering, sir. Since when I did this, I said, I said, I did not pray. I won't say anything. If I now say it, are we together? The reason of what? Prayer. Don't pray for the downfall of others. Don't pray negative things for others. Is that okay? Number three. The time of prayer. The time of prayer, chapter 3 and verse 1. Say, and they wait at the ninth hour. Act chapter 10 and verse 9. At the sixth hour. So there are strategic timings of prayer. The night time is a very powerful time of prayer. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 2 say, Day after the utterest speech, but night release wisdom and knowledge. The night time is a powerful time you pray because it gives what clear interference in the spiritual world. All everybody that I've seen it seen now and just misbehaving already, the network is clear now. They are sleeping. So your prayer of show of your, your one hand. And apart from that, the best time to challenge darkness is in the dark. Now listen, look up this way. Are you here? If you know, remember your clock, you have 12, yeah, right? Then what? Three. Then what? Six. Then what? Nine. What do you have? The symbol of a cross. Those are strategic times certain spiritual portals are opened. That's why the apostles observed it. The ninth hour, the sixth hour. It was strategic for them. They are starting spiritual gates open. Am I saying if you pray at that time, God will not hear you? No, he would. But when you are looking for certain kinds of things, certain kind of interventions, you take advantage of those specific hours. Are we getting blessed already? Number four. The place of prayer. The place of prayer. You must find a place that sponsors your at that's the, an atmosphere that sponsors prayer. Some atmosphere of prayer extinguishers. Are we following? Including some churches. You go, your prayer life dies. That's why Jesus chose solitude place, mountains. Are we following? I'm not saying you should go and look for uh, Mekukele and climb. Is that okay? But find an atmosphere that sponsors your prayer. You know you'll not be distracted. One of the atmosphere that sponsors my prayer sometimes is noise. Because when you make more noise, it helps me to shout more. And when I'm shouting, I don't like it that people will even be hear me. So when you are even making noise, it gives me joy. So I can just be shouting and pray. So it depends on what works for you. Nobody say it must be a solemn atmosphere. Do we understand that? It has to be what sponsors. You have studied it over time. That this kind of at atmosphere. Some of it might be you are playing a sermon and then you are praying. You are playing a worship song and you are praying. It sponsors your atmosphere. The place of prayer. Let me stop at two more points and we rise up to pray. Number five. The length of prayer. It's essential for an effective prayer life. End of what? Prayer. Matthew chapter 26 for verse 40. It says, can't you even watch for an hour? So the minimum requirement for a daily life of prayer is what? One hour. The minimum requirement for a day. Prayer power is measured in what? Is that not so? Current in empires. Voltage in vote. Prayer is measured in hours. The unit for prayer is what? Hour. Number six, the mode of prayer. The mode of prayer. How do you pray? You must get to a, time, a point of your life where you go beyond normal English language and you begin to pray in the spirit. The realms of groaning. I won't be able to dwell much on that. I'll take, when I'm teaching on commanding supernatural, I'll get to that. Are we following? Where you begin to speak certain kind of languages that cancer can understand. The realms of groaning. The Bible says, but the spirit effect our infirmity. Romans 8 26. To pray with groanings that cannot be uttered with what? Words. The mood of prayer. Very important, but I'll talk about it some other time. Number seven, your passion and fervency in prayers. Passion and fervency in prayer. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7. He said, Why Jesus was on earth. Hebrews 5 7. 
he prayed with loud voice, you see it, with strong cries and tears unto him that is able to save him from death and he was heard in that he feared. You are challenging all time. You are, Lord, every other my family, just cast, just cast, just cast. Your altar is smiling. I'm telling you. Your altar is what? Smiling. There are some of you, the kind of prayer life you have, it's not even demons that are still in active service that are, that are on your case. The devil just recruit retired ones. That you're marking for me because you stress, so just mark. It's not serious demons. Are we together? This is how who the, in the days of his why Jesus was where on earth. How did he pray with loud cries? Oh God, over my family, I command a change. Over this situation, I command a change. Ah, Babylon Shataka, Igabe Shata, Edadade Shata. You pray. There must be what fervency simply means spiritual fire. Are we together? Spiritual what? Fire. I told my children yesterday, I said, when you come out from the place of prayer and you did not feel like you prayed, you have not prayed. It's beyond spiritual. You must feel it. Yes. You must what? Feel it. The Bible says Jesus prayed to a point that the sweat became as blood. Acts chapter 10. Peter prayed to a point he was hungry. You pray, you are still looking full. He prayed to a point he was hungry. He had to come and say they should put we were now first on fire. Then he climbed up and caught you again. Shabba, la, 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 ba, ah, so it is natural to be hungry because you are exerting energy. Prayer is both a physical and a spiritual combination. It is natural. Let me tell you. The Bible says, oh, should I teach you this now? Some other time. But let me give you a tip on how The Bible says and that for a man to be born again, he must be born of the water and of the spirit. The water talks of the word and then the spirit talks of what? Our spirit, God. Then the Bible tells us that man is three entity, right? Body, soul, and spirit. Then when we come to Daniel, we have three men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then when those three men join to the fourth man, they will touch fire. Some other time. I will explain it some. I know you didn't catch it. But some other time. It's not a sermon for you. Number nine. Number eight. Faith in prayers. Faith, Mark 11, 23 to 24. It said, when you pray, believe you have received confidence in prayers. Now, you are not just doing a spiritual exercise. When you pray, be confident that God has what? Had you. Are we together? Be confident. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. So, without faith, it is impossible to what? Please God. Number nine, discipline in prayers. Discipline in prayers. You must pray consistently. You must pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5, 17, Luke 18 and verse 1. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. The Bible says, but we will give ourselves continually to what? Prayer. And to the ministry of the word. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says, and they continue steadfastly in prayers and the doctrines of the apostles. So you must be disciplined. Colossians chapter 4, say, but, uh, Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. It says, but watching in prayers continuously. Watching continuously. You make it a life. Be disciplined. What is discipline? Discipline is doing what you not normally want to what? Do. Is that not so? That's discipline. Number 10. Persistence in prayers. Persistence in prayers. That means you don't get tired. You don't get weary. The Bible says do not be weary in doing good. If you don't get weary, if the devil cannot weary you, you'll soon weary him. What did I say again? If the devil cannot weary you in prayers, you'll still weary him. He will give up and leave you alone. So you must be persistent in prayer. Number 11, fasting and prayers. It's the next essential. There are prayers that require that you add what? Fasting. Acts chapter 13 and verse 3. Say why they were ministering to God in prayer and in fasting. The Lord spoke. Acts chapter 14 and verse 23. Say and they called unto the elders and ordained them. And having prayed and fasted, they sent them forth. Act 14, 13. They sent them forth. Matthew 17 and verse 21 Matthew 17 21 and Mark 9 29 he said but this goeth not except by prayers and fasting so there are certain situations of your life called what this kind so when you have prayed you are not getting results sometimes add what fasting my only pain is that it's only when it comes to the time of fasting people ask stupid questions I don't know when you are can you, can you be eating what means? is it still liquid you, you make the beans when liquid Somebody asked me one time, Shall I don't know any way, anytime you are vacuuming, can you drink soup? 
only when it comes to fasting, you see believers asking mu, mu, mu questions. <laughs> May God bring revival upon this Christianity. Yeah. What did I say? May God bring revival upon this what? Christianity. One time somebody called me. I gave him, he was he was fasting. And I come, sir, please, I don't know. Can I take pineapple? I said, Later I come again. Sir, I don't know. Can I take golden more? I said, you see, as, I, as far as I'm concerned, you are not fasting. If these are the only voices you are hearing throughout the whole fast, you have not told me, sir, I had a dream. I had a vision. He said, can I take golden more after 10 to 30 minutes? Can I take pineapple? Can, can I take you're asking mumu mumu mu question fasting is fasting fast then your neighbor fast so fasting subdues your flesh fasting humbles you before God number three fasting boosts your sensitivity number four fasting purifies your soul you can't be fasting and you are thinking immoral thought there is a way if you do seven days some of you have never tried that in your life because some of us have got into 90 days no food but maybe you just start some of you at least seven days even if they put somebody naked, you won't see it. Now, hunger, hunger. I asked Jesus. The Bible says after he finished what he was hungry. You won't see it. You just. I remember one of my son. We, we went on 10 days that time. And the way he was used to fasting is that when you are fasting, you sleep. He didn't know I don't do that type. So we can, like I said, we want to get on 10 days. So he came to my house. So while we are doing it, we pray morning to night, non-stop morning. One day, couldn't eat it. Ah, ah, ah. Day three, after we were praying at the point, and I went into the, I was not hearing anything again. He just told me, say, Papa, power. Said, after three days. <laughs> so fasting purifies your soul. Is that okay? Yes. Sometimes you need it you are praying, you are distracted, your heart is wandering everywhere and there, you need to join what? Fasting. To put your body under subjection. Fasting opens you to the radiance of God's spirit. Number 12, your watering of prayers. The watering of prayers. How do you water prayers? Through giving. Sometimes you sow seeds to support your prayer. Another way you water prayer is by what? Speaking positive words. Confession. You can't speak opposite of the harvest you're expecting. 1 Peter 3.10. He said, he that love life, I want to see good days. 1 Peter 3.10. Should refrain his tongue from speaking guile and evil. Did you see that? He that loveth life, I want to see good days. Should refrain his tongue from speaking guile and evil. So wow, one way we spoil prayers is that you speak something. After you've come, you pray, God will change my story. My academy will be beautiful this semester. Then you go and say opposite. Say this semester, I am finished. And you are now wondering why it is not working. You say it's God. It's you. Because you have not been taught that you water what? Prayers. You say, Paul planted, Apollo watered, then what does God do? He gives the increase. So you must not just plant in prayers, but you must also learn to what? Water it. Sometimes you sow a seed. Then you speak what? Positively. Is that not so? Are we getting blessed already? Give me three minutes and I'm done. Psalm, Proverbs 18 and verse 20. It said, a man shall be satisfied. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his lips. A man's belly. What you are saying is what we feel in life. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of what? His mouth. So what are you speaking? After praying, do you speak your expectation or you are still speaking your experiences? What are you saying? Your mouth and your heart must agree. That's why the Bible says that faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing them by the word of God. So two hearing. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Then hearing now comes. There are two what? Hearing. So your mouth and your heart must agree. You can't be saying one thing or thinking, believing God for one thing and be behaving otherwise anything you have lived in the hands of God, find rest in it stop having sleepless nights again, right? if you truly confident that you told God, and you truly trust his power and ability then why are you having sleepless nights? are we together? number 13 testimony and thanksgiving of prayer testimony and thanksgiving of prayer of prayers so how do you sustain an effective life of prayer and make prayer very effective? The one God did before for you and answered. Have you thanked him for it? Did you testify? Philippians 4 and verse, 2, verse 6. The Bible says, But be not anxious for nothing, but in everything with thanksgiving, make your request known. With what? The word with is a career. It simply means the vehicle for prayer is what? Thanksgiving. 
Colossians 4 and verse 2. He said, but watch in prayers and same with what? Thanksgiving. Watch in prayers. Continue in what? Prayer. And watch in the same with what? Thanksgiving. Support it with it. Are you seeing the, the ingredient that is missing? Why your prayer doesn't produce power? Do you understand that? You support it. You thank God. You prayed once. Did something. Come and thank him anytime again because he's very sure that when he does it he will get the glory so of you God have done so much things of you you are ashamed to come up he will be ashamed to keep answering you learn to testify learn to shout about it and number 14 sensitivity in the place of prayer sensitivity now the place of prayer is not as important let me put it this way the length of time in prayer is not as important as your sensitivity in prayer when you are praying wait to hear what God is saying and that brings me to the last point 15 the wisdom from prayers sometimes what you get from the prayer place of prayer is wisdom my son take this step so don't be into because you want to tell people I pray 10 days I pray 5 days you know that's the brag now no be sensitive then look for what the wisdom from prayers while I went to Baba Lola's mountain or in um, uh, Odawa or something like that the, a, a, a man of God there was sharing testimony with us. He said, Someone came to that mountain for 100 days, fasting and prayer, 100 days. God did not answer him. Okay, you went with me. God did not answer him. The man went to Oshun State, Ede, the other mountain of Babalola there, prayed for 103. God did not, he took a man of God to come and tell him that, What are you looking for? God said, Just carry anything you have and go and find any old man and give the person. God will change your story. And what he had was 14 era. He gave an old man 14 and God took him abroad, Canada. 1 plus 103 plus sometimes what you need is what? The wisdom from prayers. Be willing to hear what God has to say. Rise up from your feet. Or even over that thing, you want to see that change, you want to see maybe over your academies, whatever situation, your finances, it might be what? A wisdom. Tell your neighbor, a wisdom from God is enough to turn your life around. Say it like you mean it. Just one wisdom from God. Just one wisdom from God. Can change your situation for can good. Situation Lift up your hands and pray. Say this after me. My Father, My Father. let the grace of prayer fall upon me afresh. Raise your voice and pray. Shata la bala biga badera ha shata lambi a praga dento. Iga bramando shata lega briana malagadaj. Ele brinango shata leda ratos kapayanda. Iba babe jota ka. Le bembe bele zuzare kriando shata yadish. Let the grace for prayer. when you come to us and say pray for me and then we pray and you see God change those situations what we do is what I've taught you are we together what I do is to put my two legs on the ground and call upon God that's the only thing I do that's why I taught you how to even make it effective the things you can balance there I remember one time we were praying over a family situation. We pray, pray, pray. That's when God taught me that. We pray, pray, pray. Then when we wake up in the morning, we now stand and be saying, this thing, I don't tie all of us. And one day the Holy Ghost says, son, you are wasting your time praying. This is what we call power leakage. Because you have no right to complain about what you are praying for. Your complaint simply means you never believe the prayers. Did you understand my point? 
you have no right to complain what you are what praying about because it simply means you never what believed your prayer will do anything that's why you are complaining how will you pray and say lord i believe you thank you jesus for hearing me you have changed this story you wake up in the morning and say kai oh, oh this matter you have, you, the bible calls it power leakage till i heard a father teach on that i say wow that's what i'm teaching you now go back to your notes download the messages later when it's out and listen to it over and over again this message will sponsor a fire for prayers into the hearts of men across the world across the globe are we together that you become effective in prayers i told you you walk to your class tomorrow monday and you get into the hall you sit down bow your head for two minutes fatalize the atmosphere Shada. Not after 10, one lecture, you are catching headache. Because those who understand spiritual matters have taken charge of the atmosphere. Only Christians behave, Christians behave like they don't know what they are doing. Are we together? I was hearing the story of a young man. It's so painful. He was expressing his pain to a man of God that a black goat was pursuing him in the dream. No, 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 no. No, no, not for sure. Let me say this that way. That a black black goat came to arrest him. I'll say what I said again. A black goat, goat that is black, came to arrest him. I was confused when I was here. Goat, your case is finished. They've even used human beings. It's goat. They are not even using an animal that works like a human. It's goat to arrest you. Not pursue you. Goat is a move. Are we together? You are done with your life. This is my lifestyle while I was in this campus. I want to study. I put my hands on the book and say, Lord, everything I read here, I have the ability to understand. Perfect understanding. I can't struggle to understand it. It enters and there I need it. I will recall it. Let's stop making, look, making Christianity look like it's one thing we pack aside. Then when we go to our corporate life, we live anywhere we like. Then when we come to church, we do the Christianity. No, you put it in everything you do. Everything you do. That's how the super intelligence came on me. Everything. Because the Bible says with God, all things are what? Possible. So I put God in everything I want to do. And I produce what? Possibilities. You pray one more prayer while I profess over us. And say, Lord, release fresh fire upon my prayer altar. Let it burn. Let it let it burn, let it burn. Pray like you mean it. Let it burn, let it burn. Fresh fire upon my prayer altar. Fresh fire upon my prayer altar. Make me a man of prayer. Make me a woman of prayer. I just hear God say to me something I want to say to you. You see, I taught you that releasing people from your heart do you more good. Don't hamper your own growth and advancement because you want to hold somebody at heart. It's not necessary. That's the secret. If I pray here, God hears me speedily. Those around me knows my prayer is one hand. One hand. If I pray here, he hears me. Because I remove those things that can block my heart. Why? I've gotten so used to humans and from anyone. Because I know humans are configured to be humans. The best of a man is still a man. People will betray you. People will hurt you. In fact, most of the people that have hurt me more in life are those I poured my life on. I stand before God. Everyone standing as a blessing to me now had not done much for them. Those heavily holding my life as a pillar and say, You will not go down, sir. 
I have not done more. Some of them have not even given them the privilege to have that chance. Let's communicate and talk. Those I gave my life. I gave my time. I gave my everything. They are the ones that finished me in life. But that's life. That's how it is. Who betrayed Jesus? His enemy. The only thing an enemy cannot do to you is betrayal. It will come from a loved one. But I let it go. Release these things from your heart. Release it from your heart. How will because of one person I will stop stop the heavens over my life and stop good from happening to me? I'm teaching you this thing so your prayer can become powerful from today. When you set your feet on the ground to pray, the heavens quake. Sometimes I pray the Lord will open your eyes that as you begin to pray from today, you begin to travel into the spiritual realm. If you see what you see, what happens there. One time I was praying with a group, group of brethren. And one started shouting, ah, ah, I said, what happened? He said, you are just releasing fire. It's you that think when you are praying, you think things don't move. Why do you now see change? Why? Why will I stand on this altar and say, in 48 hours, let the light in the campus be restored after two weeks. And it happened exactly 48 hours, dot, not 24 I just spoke, I saw what took place there. I saw it. Are we together? If you know the quakings, what you are listening, they are lightnings, thunderings, earthquake in the spiritual world. That's why when you pray, you need to get lost in it. Get into the spirit and just position yourself to the atmosphere and release it. Things are quaking and happening there. Changes are taking place. Do you understand that? May the grace and fire for his solid and strong life of prayer come upon you now. May your altar burn again for Jesus. I declare and I declare, may your altar be set on fire now. May God make you a man, a woman of prayer. And may from today, through prayer, you produce possibilities in God. May through prayers you bring change over situations. In the name of Jesus. Everyone that believes God for a change in the family, engage in prayer. And follow the principles I taught. You begin to see changes. You begin to see changes. Follow it. And say, Lord, I follow this. You begin to see changes. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. May your heavens be opened. May your ways be opened. May money come to you with free course. May good come to you with free course. May your paths be paved with gold. May God connect us. May your impact be felt across the nations of the world. May God use you mightily for his glory. May your love for God not grow cold. In the name of Jesus, anything suffocating your walk with God, I put fire on it now. In the name of Jesus, anyone under the sound of my voice going through any humiliation and harassment from the pit of hell, I declare and I declare supernatural intervention now. Over your family, every harassment from hell, I prophesy supernatural intervention. In the name of Jesus. Before I prophesy over your week, in one minute, ask God whatever you want him to do for you. Talk to him about your week. And say, Lord, this is the change I desire. Over this matter, Lord, bring a change. Over this issue, Lord, bring a change. Watch my God and see what he can do. You made a way. Pray, pray one minute. You, you made, made a way. way. You, you, you. That will be your testimony this week. Do you believe it? Wave your hands and sing that song. That will be your testimony this week. I prophesy for you, for your family. That will be your testimony this week. I prophesy on that God. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. So we bring you out of every struggle, out of every pain, out of every difficulty, out of every financial shame, out of every family battle. Jesus, when above against the wall, oh yeah, I see 
capacity of my call and office and I prophesy I declare I declare the reign of terror over this territory ends now in the name of Jesus I speak to the clouds I speak to the atmosphere the reign of terror the reign of wickedness the reign of assault from hell over this territory ends now ends now ends now ends now I decree and I prophesy from the strength of my call. I speak as a voice. I decree and I declare anyone henceforth in this territory that will go into houses or meet individuals to rob them, to hurt them, I decree they will be caught instantly. From tomorrow, you will begin to hear good news. Anyone who has set up themselves as gangs to harass men, to steal from men I decree they be exposed and caught they be exposed and caught they be exposed and caught we say no to terror in this territory in the name of Jesus you will not suffer loss you will not suffer shame you will not suffer defeat nothing will put you into depression Wherever you want to see that change, I prophesy God to put change there. Amen. This week, a big breakthrough will happen for your family. Amen. A mighty breakthrough will come for you in the name of Jesus. May the hand of God be visible upon your life. May the hand of God be visible upon all you do. In the name of Jesus. Your week is blessed. Enjoy strange favors. Be a blessing to everyone you come in contact with. And everyone that come in contact with you, be a blessing to you. In the name of Jesus, you will not fall victims of accidents. Death is rebooked for your sake. Arrows of sicknesses are returned back to the sender. Anyone under the sound of my voice and every family represented here, where the sentence of death is hanging, evil sentences are hanging, I remove it and return it back to the sender. For your sake, your family are heavenly defended, heavenly protected. All you shall hear from home shall be good news. All you shall hear from home shall be good news. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy, miracle jobs are released. You might be standing in the gap for somebody, or it might be for you, but I prophesy, miracle jobs are released. Miracle babies are released. Miracle marriages are released. In the name of Jesus. You have a family member sick at home. Can I pray? I declare and I declare. Family member sick at home that is giving you consign. I just saw that in my vision. I'm going to say pray for that person. I declare and I declare. Bella Hasu, Bella Kash, Koka, Bina Heidi. Lebebeben non doko baho sang vehe na non kapru enzada. Limbro akalo jede genga vinon so holanti la gedehi. Am bebebe atoka to zata kalanda. God said, Is there anything too hard for me? I release miracle angels to wherever they are. I command strength to their body. I break the holes of diseases. I break the holes of infirmities. I break the yoke of wickedness. I release healing virtues now. Healing power now. In the name of Jesus. Let there be reign of testimonies. How many of you want to testify next Sunday? You are sure. Are you sure? If you don't want to testify of anything good, don't worry. But you are sure you want to testify of something good. I declare, and I give, declare, this week may God give you a reason to testify. I prophesy under God, may God give you a reason to testify. May God do in your life what only Him can do. In the name of Jesus.